Hello, greetings, and welcome to a continuous training, uh, KTech for All, a software analysis training program that will equip us in necessary skills to become good system analysts. Our training program started from a variety of programs which we did together. We have studied so far many different portions, and today's lesson is focus on use case analysis. Can I hear someone say use case analysis? I am Ka Kissinger, your tutor, software analyst, a system analyst, a software developer, and a DevOps engineer. System analysis and design, use case analysis, a, let's get to know what it is all about. We are going to review what we have done. We're going to introduce ourselves to what a use case analysis is all about. What are the elements to build a use case diagram? Steps in building a use case diagram. Okay. Practical lab sheet. Okay. Now, in our subsequent trainings, we saw Wu was an actor. And actors are one of the important things that are necessary when it comes to building use case diagrams. And an actor can be a human user, a material device, or another system that interact with the system we are studying. Why is it important to identify actors when we develop our systems? It helps us to know who does what. And what are the various types of requirements we've studied so far? We have studied the business requirement, the user requirement, the functional requirement, the non-functional requirement, and the system requirements. Very good. Introduction. Especially, we employ use case diagram to answer three fundamental questions. Three. And what are these questions? The very first question is, what are we describing? What is being described? And this is answered by the system. What are we actually describing? It's answered by the system. The next worry is, who interact with our systems? The actors. What are the peripherals that interact with our system? That is when we speak about the actors. Lastly, what can we do? What can the actor do? And that is what the use case or the use cases come to solve. Our use cases come to answer the question of who interact with what? What are we describing the system? What are the various rules in the system, the actors? And what can we do, the use cases? Now, the elements of a use case diagram, we have the actor, as you can see. An actor refers to a person, another system, as we said, a hardware device that interacts with our system to achieve a useful goal. Actors can be represented using various, I repeat, various, representation. In fact, three. But basically, they are represented using stick figures. As you can see here, actor. An actor has a name. All actors has a name. And it's represented by a stick figure. Based on, um, on what you use to draw your diagrams, it can either be a stick figure or a rectangle where you have to indicate the name of the actor. Actor, professor. Professor is the name of the actor. Or, as we said, a material device like an email server that interacts with our systems. You see, for example, in these two use cases, this is an actor, this is an actor, and this actor is a particular uh, material device, while this other actor here is a human user, as you can see. So these are actor, the one of the components, or the first component of the use case diagram is the person that uses the diagram or that uses the use cases, which is the actor. Secondly, the next 
component is the system. The system, as you can see. Now, as you can see carefully from your diagrams, the system is a set of objects and the relationship among the objects that are viewed as a whole and designed to achieve a purpose. A set of objects and relationship among the objects viewed as a whole and designed to achieve a purpose. Now, in most diagrams, in UML diagrams, as you can see, systems are mostly represented by rectangular shapes. By the rectangular shape, as you can see, let me annotate this diagram. By this rectangular shape, excuse me. By this rectangular shape, this is a system. This rectangular shape represents the system. And as an actor, the system also has a name. This is the name, student administration. This is the name of the system. And you see the system is comprised of use cases and actors that interact with the system through the use cases. Can we see that? The system consists of a name. And in the system, you have use cases. And an actor interact with the system through the use case. OK. Now, let's move further. OK, let me erase this. OK. Then we have now the use cases on the, on the old, which is the last component, use cases. Now, a use case represents a set of sequences of actions that will need to be carried out by the system to produce an observable result of interest to the actor. So since the actor communicate with the system through a use case, so the use case now represent, use the word represent, so it is not it represent, it's a set, can just be one thing, but it's a set of sequences of actions that will need to be performed. Each actor, each use case, sorry, has a name. And a use case is an activity. It's represented by the oval shape. The oval shape. It's represented by this oval shape. Oval shape. It has a name. And since it's an activity, it must always start with the verb. This is, for example, this is a three representation. The oval shape, the name can be found within or on that, depending on what you are using to draw your diagrams. And in some others, you have a rectangle with a circle inside. You can see query student data, query student data, query student data. It's an action, so you must always start with a verb. Take note of that, please. Always start with a verb. And these are the three components of a use case. Now, after viewing these three components, let's go further to understand other components. Summarily, we have spoken about a system, a set of objects. Summarily, the system describes the system, the boundaries between the system. We'll talk about system. It is a boundary between the system we are building and the users of the system. Now, in Star UML, which we are going to be using for our demo, uh, use cases to put down to draw a use case diagram to 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 to, to draw this to, to to insert the system you use the name use case object as you can see on your left use case subject this is what you use once you click on the use case subject it is what is used to represent the system we are going to be seeing it as we go further now, the next, which is the actor, I'm sure. Permit me. Okay. The use case, rather. We have spoken about the system. The use case is a unit of functionality of the system because it represents a set of sequence of actions that need to be carried out by the system to produce a result of interest to the actor. 
And use cases in star UML is represented by use case, as you will see when we go to our demo, represented by use case. So when you click on use case, you will use that for the use case, okay? Now, the next, which is the last, is actually the actor. In star UML, the act actors are identified by the stick figure. This is it, actor, as you can see. You are going to see when we go to draw. Actors, and it plays a role of the users of the system. This is it. In star UML, when you are doing use cases, use cases are represented by a stick figure. Okay, that is done now. Before we go further to drawing diagrams and doing some demos in star UML, let's get to understand relationships. It's important because in, in use case diagrams, we have actors, we have the system, and have use cases. Interaction between the system and an actor is through the use case with the help of a relationship. Interaction between various use cases within the system are done with the help of relationship. So relationship help to, to, to coordinate communication. The very first relationship here is an association. An association primarily exists between an actor and a use case. And what does it describe when you use an, an, an association relationship? Assuming the name of this actor is X. Assuming the name of this actor is X. When you say X associate to A, what does it mean? It means X participates in the execution of A. X triggers the execution of A. X is the one initiating. X participate in executing A. Now, generalization relationship exists either between two use cases or between two actors. The primary idea behind generalization is inheritance. An actor is in, or a use case is inheriting the properties entirely of the other. Once you see B to A, B inherit A. Y inherit X. What does it mean? It means B inherit all properties and the entire behavior of A. Y inherit from X. Y participate in all use cases in which X participate. Now, what is the difference between in a, a use case inheritance and an actor inheritance. In a use case inheritance, since it's just a particular behavior and a particular action or activity, once B is inheriting from A, is inheriting the, the entire behavior. What is, because since a use case is a behavior and activity, what A does, B does as well. But when an actor inherits from another, it inherits all the use cases that are linked to the actor from which he's inheriting the properties. So if X is linked to 15 other use cases, it means that Y will inherit from that. We'll see that you know, in the next few minutes, what, what all of that is all about. But that is clearly some of the relationships you can have. But before we end, we are going to discuss the uh, uh, two other relationships, which is the include and the extend relationship, very familiar relationship. Okay, they include and they extend relationship. These are primary relationships that exist only between use cases, only between use cases. Now, they extend relationship. Let me give you a, a brief scenario. Everything being equal, for you to enter into a house, you need to open the door. So the process of entering the house includes opening the door. Now, once you open the door, each house has various compartments, either the bathroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, or the living room. Once you enter into the house, for you to be able to enter, you must open the door. So the post in entering the house includes opening the door. So for example, if activity A here, is open door, open door. Now, to open door, you must open, put, insert the key to be in the house. Like for example, if A is get into the house, 
get into the house. To get into the house, you must open the door. So A must include B. Get into the house must include open door. So when A includes B, it means that they require incorporation of B into the use case of A. Before use case A is performed, B needs to be performed into it. B needs to be incorporated into its activity. And that is the foundation of the include relationship. Look carefully. The direction of arrow of the include relationship lift from the one that needs to have the second inclusion. A includes B. It means B is added into the execution of A. Extend relationship. I took the example of getting into the house. Once you get into the house after opening the door, you can go to the living room, you can go to the bathroom, you can go to the bedroom, or to the kitchen, or remain in the living room. Now, those are extended relationships. It means you, you can do, you optional, you can decide to either or. So when a use case has a possibility, for example, manage users. To manage users, you can add, you can delete, you can update, you can view, you can print list. Those are extended relationships, giving the particular use case the opportunity to have other incorporated use cases within itself, which can be used either or. And now in Star UML, this is a relationship here. Include and extend. Permit me, I forgot to show you. This is a relationship association. This is a, this is a relationship within association generalization. This is a relationship generalization. So most of those relationships are found here. Once we go to our demo, we are going to understand fully. Okay, this was a diagram. And I hope everyone has been able to understand so far what, what we have been talking about. Okay. Now, after understanding use cases in its entirety, for you to build a use case diagram, you must do certain things. But before that, let's look at what you shouldn't do. See, a use case should not include, should not include issue certificate, include send notification, include collect certificate. This is not accepted. Remember that these are notations that are universally accepted, unifiedly accepted by everyone. So it is not your own annotation. So you must annotate in a way that is acceptable by all. This is not accepted. A use case, in a use case, like an actor is placed out. Conventionally, use cases are uh, actors, primary actors are on the left, secondary actors on the right, not within the system. So this is not accepted as well. Now, one thing you should note as well is that the use case diagram specify what needs to be done and not how it has to do it. That is why we say a use case is a set of sequence of action. Normally, we all know that for you to issue a certificate, you must log in into your application, you must enter the data, you must send the data to be saved, then at the end you log right. But all of this is not necessary. The lecturer issued certificate. But that is all. That is what needs to be done, but not how. How to be done is answered by the sequence diagram that actually expands the sequences of events that will need to be performed for that particular use case to be attended. So it is very important you know this place. Secondly, let's look at another example that talks about relationships. Now see, assistant manages student data. Assistant as an actor as well issues information. Professor as an actor, issue information, professor and other case uh, uh, course. But this is wrong. Why? Because assistant and professor are sharing one use case. It shouldn't be so. What should happen? You remember the concepts of generalizations, right? You remember? We said with generalization between two actors, an actor inherits all the use cases of the other actor. See, in this example, we created a new actor called Research Associate. And what does he do? He issues information. So it means that assistant is he inheriting what the research associate is doing. Professor is inheriting what the research associate is doing. In this way, they both share a use case, but through a relationship like generalization. And this is what use cases are all about. Before you build a use case, it's important you identify all the use cases. Write it down. What are the various use cases? What will you use case be doing? Identify the major use cases and the additional use cases that can be like optional use cases. Then from there, I can identify a few elements and within a few steps, you can do 
always ensure you confirm your use cases. So we will continue in behind the screen as we go to the demo session. Stay put, please. Okay, let's look at star UML. If you don't have star UML, you can download. This is the version, star UML 5.0.2. You can download the latest version or another version, depending on the time in which you look at this video. This is star UML in front of you. Once you open your star UML, it's important you note this, please. Look up, let me take time to educate you a bit on star UML. Now, when you open your star UML, as you can see, you have this particular element here. This is for the map. We are going to be using it when we start drawing. This is for the various tabs that are open. These are the various components, the extension manager. You might use it depending on how you're going. So you can draw so many diagrams and on your thumbnails, you can have all of them here. Okay. Now you have this two bar here, the bar, the file, the edit, the format, the model, the tools, the view, you are going to see it as much as you enter inside. By default, you see what the diagram you see here by default is a class diagram, if you look at it carefully. By default, it is a class diagram that is being indicated here. In order to change this place, you go under model. On model, you take add diagram, then all the 14 or 16 UML diagrams are going to be displayed, depending on what you want to draw. But we all want to draw the use case diagram. So once we take use case, this changes. And you see the changes it equals to what we had done in our PowerPoint. Assuming we want to do a, a, a banking system, or let's just say even a, a small ordering system, restaurant ordering system. Now remember. This is the use case subject. The use case subject helps us to bring out the system. I click and drop. If I double click twice, you see there's a lock at the end. Anything I will drop will be what I had double click. So ensure when you're only stuck, just know that this is a reason. So you unclick again so that nothing's happening. Control A is the same thing until it, it goes. Okay. Now, if I click once, use case subject and drop. You see it's small. I click, I expand. Expanding gives me the possibility to have the subject, the system, sorry. And the system has a name. Let's say ordering food management system. Okay. This is a food management system. This is our system. We can right click on the system and take format. They take font or font color or show or whatever. I'm concerned now mostly with the fonts. You can take the font to 16, for example, to increase this name. Now, I can see if I click, let me format more font. Increase it, for example, to 22, so they can really be big. good. Food management system. You can see I easily click and carry, right? You can see. You see this map, for example, see? And actually navigate through this map. When the diagram becomes really big, you can navigate through the map. Just double click to go more. Okay. Now we will need to put use cases. For example, these are the use cases. One use case. So you click on it. Remember, if you double click as well, it will be appearing multiple times. Anything you're going to be saving, that's what you're going to display. So to remove that, you click again on it. So you can remove this, remove this, remove this, remove this, remove this, remove this. Assume we have a use case, for example, other food or view food list. Let's use the first one. You view food list. After viewing food list, you can go further maybe to other food. Okay. Let's assume that is the activity of an actor. Maybe he pays again, pay, payment. Pay other. Or other payment. Any of them, since you say other food, you can use other payment. Okay, assuming that this is the activity of an actor, let's call this actor customer. 
the same thing I click and I drop. This my system is too big. Okay. As a customer, I don't need to do another thing and do this my own thing. Well, imagine now we have an administrator which is working maybe to add food in the list. Add food in list. Uh, let's say again, you can uh, confirm order. Example. Now you see that this is a use case. So I have another actor here, for example. Let's say admin. Now, what do you observe? Maybe the administrator, for him to do all of these things, he needs to log in, right? To make sure that he's an authentic user. So let's add login. You see, the admin, this, the customer doesn't need to log in because a hungry man is an angry man. The only way that you can secure that you're actually truthful about what you're doing is that you pay. Once you order food, you pay for then it's delivered to you. So what can we do here? Association relationship or click twice. Then I hold, drop. Hold, drop, hold, drop. And then I come out on click. Remember, because I want to use it multiple times. Admin as well. Food order by admin. Order, confirm order by admin. Okay. Now, he needs to log in. So you need to add food, he needs to log in. You need to confirm to log in. So it's an include relationship. I click on include. And then I leave from here to here. I click again. I leave from here. Instead of doing it one one, that's why I always double click. You see, so this is a basic application for food ordering management system. This is how you use the star UML. In our subsequent video, we are going to take time actually to zoom into what is a use case diagrams more in detail as to taking practical examples, getting requirements from it, and actually doing something in detail. So until we meet again, stay blessed.